Have you ever wondered why it is difficult for you to go for round two after the first round? Maybe you are just too sensitive or too tired to go over again. If you are a man and you've been asking yourself this question, this video is for you. And also, if you are a woman and you have been asking yourself this same question, this video is for you. Today, I am going to be talking about the sexual response cycle and also the refractory period. So you have a better understanding of the physiological and emotional changes that takes place in the body during sexual stimulation and sexual activities. If this video is what you are interested in, I will advise you don't skip any part of this video because every aspect of this video is very important and essential. Let's go there and find out. All right, welcome back. Like I earlier said, today I'm going to be talking about the sexual response cycle. Why it is difficult for you to go again. This particular video is actually answering a subscriber's question, which was dropped on the comment section, which says, Nurse Miss Mary, could you please talk about the refractory phase after sex? But I decided to explain in details what happens before, during, and after sexual intercourse, the series of changes that takes place. That was what led to this topic, the sexual response cycle. The sexual response cycle is a sequence of activities that takes place, emotional changes, physiological changes that takes place when an individual is sexually stimulated and when an individual is having sexual intercourse. There are basically four phases in this cycle. There are basically four phases in this cycle. Let's talk about the first phase. The first phase is known as the excitement stage. As the name implies, excited. Just picture yourself when you're excited, you got a gift, what usually happens to your body. You know, when you're excited, your heart rate increases, definitely you're going to be breathing fast. So that is similar to what happens in the excitement phase of the sexual response cycle. During this phase, there's increased tension in the muscles. That is, the muscles tends to contract. Then the second thing that happens is that there's increased heart rates. This person begins to breathe faster. There's increase in breath, increased respiratory rates. And also what happens is that the nipples becomes hardened. That is when you see the woman's nipples becomes pointed and becomes obvious. The breast becomes fuller during this period. As the breast becomes fuller, there's also increased blood flow to the genitals. You know what I, what I, what I mean when I say the genitals? That is the penis, the clitoris, the labia majora, the labia minora. There's increased blood flow down there. And when there's increased blood flow down there, there's going to be an erect penis. The man's penis becomes erect. The woman's clitoris becomes swollen. The labia minora becomes swollen. The labia majora becomes swollen because there's an increased blood flow to that area. And for the women, the vagina becomes more lubricated. Secretions are around the vagina that makes it easier for penetration to take place. The men's testicles also swell and there's also release of some lubricants or some secretions by the men. That is what happens during the first phase of what the sexual response cycle. I believe as a man or as a woman who have experienced sex, who have had sexual encounters, you must have experienced all these things I told you before the main event. Then that takes me to the second phase, which is the plateau phase. In the plateau phase, what really happens is that what happens in the first phase, which is the excitement phase, increases. As the name implies, plateau, which is high level. So the vagina like becomes more lubricated, the vagina becomes more swollen, the clitoris becomes more sensitive, the tensions around the muscles increases, the, the testicles become tightened. So whatsoever took place at the excitement phase, um, phase increases in the plateau phase it's it, like it becomes more intensified in the plateau phase that is what it simply means that is the second phase the excitement place is phase is when that ginger happens like that like the whole body is stimulated but in the plateau phase what happens in the excitement phase intensifies it increases as the name 
implies. The data takes us to the third phase, which is the orgasm phase. In the orgasm phase, the muscles contract and release all that tension it has been gathering since the excitement and the play to phase. During this orgasm stage, for the men and for the women, you experience it. There's increase in heart rate, there's increase in breathing, the muscles contract and you see the men, they release it out. They release the sperm. The women, they also release that tension during the orgasm Phase. Oh, I've gotten to orgasm. It simply means those tension, those sexual tensions, they are being released. There's a difference between orgasm and ejaculation. So I'm going to be explaining that after I explain the four phase. Then that takes us to the fourth phase, which is the resolution phase. In the resolution phase, everything begins to go back to normal. Yes. The clitoris that was swollen, the labia minora that was swollen, everything begins to go back to normal. The heart rate that was on the high side, the breathing rate that was on the high side, everything begins to go back to normal. During this resolution phase, it is difficult for a man or a woman to get stimulated because the body is trying to go back to its base. The body is trying to go back to where it is coming from. The body is trying to return back to factory setting during the resolution phase. And we say this refractory period is taking place or the post-ejaculatory refractory period period or refractory phase let me tell you something there's a difference between orgasm and um, ejaculation orgasm is usually mediated by the centers in the brain why ejaculation is mediated by the spinal cord the spinal ejaculatory center in terms of ejaculation phase there are two parts or two phase in the ejaculation phase we have the emission phase and the expulsion phase in terms of the emission phase, what happens is that there's release of the semen for this, from the seminal vesicles and the prostrate into the posterior urethra. While in the expulsion phase, there's contraction of the urethra spinster and the relaxation of the pelvic floor that leads to the release of that sperm into the outside world. So these are the two phases of ejaculation. Remember, we have four phases in a sexual response cycle. We have the excitement phase, we have the plateau phase, we have the orgasm phase, and we have the resolution phase. And we said that there's a difference between orgasm and ejaculation. And I also explained that there are two phases in ejaculation. We have the emission phase and the expulsion phase phase now let me talk about the refractory period in details during this refractory period refractory period is more or less like a time in which a man's body takes to regain itself to like to engage itself in sexual intercourse it was discovered that younger men they take they can take few minutes to one hour to go again to go for another round but as a man becomes older it might take 12 to 24 hours to go for another round but in general refractory phase varies a man may have a refractory phase of just 30 minutes or two minutes but another man might have a refractory phase of two days so that is why i'm saying it varies but with individuals Okay, in terms of the refractory phase, it is believed that why that phase usually happens is because um, the sperm bank is being replenished. You know, a lot of sperm is going out, so they have to repl uh, replenish the sperm storage. They have to re uh, replenish the sperm store. So that might be the reason why people experience that refractory phase. Or it can be a protective mechanism to prevent fatigue or tiredness as a result of sex. Why am I making this video? I am making this video to help educate you on refractory phase. I want you to understand that as a woman, as a lady, different men, different women have their refractory phase. All you just have to do is to study that of your spouse, study that of your partner to know their refractory phase and when they can go over again. Because once you study them, it makes um, sexual intercourse, I would say, understanding for both parties. Yeah, just know that no two men, no two individuals might be the same, but the average is between few minutes to one hour or two 
hours per se so refractory phase is normal it's just a phase in which your body is trying to get back to normal after the whole sexual activities and i hope this video helped you understand what refractory phase is and it's nothing for you to be worried about it's just a mechanism that's helping you to relax yourself after sex relax yourself after vigorous exercise so you don't get overworked you don't get tired and you don't get exhausted i hope this video is helpful definitely it has answered somebody's question thank you very much for staying tuned thank you very much for watching this video if you've not watched our video about sex the benefit of sex to the men the benefit of sex to the women and you've not watched our video on how, tricks on how to make him last longer for those that are having men that don't last longer there are some trips tricks i have listed out that we make your man last longer i've made a video on that i'm going to be leaving the video the links to the video so you have access to it thank you very much for staying tuned thank you very much for watching this video don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe and also don't forget to share with a friend if you caught value for all my returning subscribers this is not Miss mary saying thank you Bye and see you in our next video.